Hey, can you just talk about what you've seen from um, their quarterback? Looks like the quick game, athletic, pass run, dual threat guy, maybe yeah. similar to what you what you were dealing with with Brewer a little bit, maybe? That's exactly right. If you compare him to someone, it's probably Brewer. Um, ball getting out fast, knows where he wants to go with the ball, can deliver it. Um, obviously, he has the, as you said, the dual threat aspect, which um, every week we talk about how many problems that presents for us. And so... Um, it's going to be a good challenge. It'll be a good challenge. We'll go to Cody Nesper next. Hey, Jamal. Um, I know in the past you've talked about having recruited Tony to Arizona. Uh, yes. Did you over did you overlap with Colin Schooler there? I sure um, did. Sure did. Yeah. And then I guess what's your impression of him? And then what do you think it's going to be like for him and Tony to be on opposite sidelines? They they'll. I'll start with the second part of that question. They both will be weirded out for a lack of a better term with it all they from what i can remember the time that we had them at at arizona they were i mean you couldn't find one without the other they were always together come in as freshmen and both played really well if i'm not mistaken both were freshman all-american or at least garnered a, a bunch of recognition nationally and um so you would have thought that those were two guys that were going to play together for forever um, obviously, fast forward a few years, and that's not the case. Um, kind of an exact opposite where they're playing against each other. But, uh, you know, going to be fun, going to be fun. I know Colin Schooler is a, is a competitor, great player, um, for all the reasons we recruited him at Arizona. Um, I love the way he plays. I like the way he approaches the game. Comes from a football pedigree with, with dad and his brothers and, and that, that whole deal. And, and he's just he's, – he's the whole thing. He's a whole player. And, um, you know, we're going to have to do a good job against him, obviously. Over to Greg Hunter. So, Jamal, I think the third Big 12 game, third sort of new quarterback that's playing against you guys that hasn't played a ton before. Challenges for you guys when you may not know him as well as guy you have 10 games of full tape on or and, and the challenges for a young quarterback as well. Yeah. So it, it it's obvious that if you don't have information on whoever you're playing, that it makes it a little bit tougher to defend them. The one thing we know is that these guys have had two weeks, and so that also lends to you know having more time to maybe do some things that fit um, his skill set maybe more than other guys or, or a former quarterback. But um, for us, what we, we like to do, and I say it week in and week out, is to build everything that we do with rules that really allow us to be mistake-free and allow the kids to play fast. And uh, you know, when we do that without beating our chest as coaches and really just turn them loose, um, it's more so of not screwing it up as opposed to to outwitting ourselves. Um, in terms of, of a freshman quarterback, it, it's it's a tough position to play, whether you're a freshman or you're a senior. I mean, it, there's some some serious teaching and some serious bumps and bruises that you have to take along the way in order to become really elite there. And, um, you know, we like to hope that we can add to that for this kid um, and make some things difficult for him. Um, we like to think that we make it difficult for every quarterback, regardless of year. And this this mindset is going to be no different. We're going we're gonna to give him some things and take them away. and some smoke and mirrors and hope that he throws us a few. That's what, that's what it comes down to. Go ahead, Ryan. Jamal, it seems like we're on here every week talking about a dual threat quarterback. You've seen a few <laughs> of them this year. Right. Um, from the outside, it seems like you've done a, a pretty good job at containing them. Um, I was just kind of wanting your assessment of that area. And then is the fact that you're preparing for one every week helping in terms of that? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all about being sound. Dual threat quarterbacks force you to have to play what you call the second play. And a lot of times that's you covering the first play and having done a masterful job doing so. And then all of a sudden the guy starts to scramble. And if you don't plaster or do your job or outwork him on that second play, you end up giving up probably a bigger play than if you would have lost the, the original, the called play. And so they force you to defend the football and defend – really their receivers for the entire count of the play. That's that's the first thing. The second thing is that if if you don't do your job, meaning that you, you're you not gap sound, if you don't have leverage on your defense, if you don't have everything cupped, um, they can really do some damage, obviously, with their legs and move chains. And, and that keeps the defense on the field, which probably lends to them having, you know, gaining some yards and then obviously ultimately points. And so, you know, dual threat quarterbacks are not what you want to see um, as a defensive staff. Uh, but it's 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 the thing of, of today. I don't know that there are very many teams that don't carry, if not one as a starter, one on the roster. And so um, no different than any other week, we've got to be buttoned up in what we do and um, and be ready for whatever whatever shows. 
Okay, Kevin, you're next. I was watching Alonzo on his interception, the way he disguised his coverage and dropped back to get the pick. Mm -hmm. With Tyke and Sean, how much more have you been able to disguise things because they are more experienced, more comfortable now in this defense? Yeah. You know, a lot of what we do comes out of the same shell, so it looks it looks probably really similar before the play, and that's a natural disguise in itself. I thought on that play that, you know, he went he went through his whole progression. He had coverage on a certain receiver. That receiver did not go out. Um, he's told to get his eyes to a certain area when that happens. He did exactly what he's been coached to do by Coach Wright. And um and the play the play is made. And, you know, again, we, we can beat our chest as coaches and say that, you know, we're we're lighting the world on fire, but the guys are really taking what they're given and running with it. And no different than any other any other team that I've ever coached. Um, when you do that, you have success and, and you're able to, to, to reach the end goal. And so, you know, four games in, we've been able to do that. You know, obviously we like to hope that we, we can continue that through the stretch. Cody, we'll go to you. So on the uh, coach's call yesterday morning, Neil was talking about Ty Key and mm -hmm. said, as good as he was last year, he's basically better at everything this year. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering what your evaluation of him has been so far. You know, we were just watching our game against him last year, and he didn't necessarily play all that well. And it's, it was kind of eye-opening in that, yeah, he's gotten better in a few spots. And, you know, you like to think that that's going to happen, right? And freshman uh, comes in and plays, and, and usually – the biggest jump is between the first and second year, and he has uh, he hasn't made a liar out of um, Coach Brown in that sense. I thought I think he's played and upped his game in every aspect, and you know the more he does that, the more we put on his plate, and he continues to to, to carry the weight easily and um, treat the coach really fun to coach. Back to you, Greg. Jamal, in terms of scouting individuals, just in a typical year, how far down, like I said, the quarterback roster do you do you know people? Do you, I mean, I assume you know the second guy, the right. third guy, but in today's world, do you have to go deeper, have at least an idea of what the fourth and fifth guy are going to do? Yeah, well, the circumstances around it all obviously shape who, who you dig in on and, and who you're gathering information on. With a normal healthy roster, you're probably looking at knowing exactly what the backdrop is on maybe the first three guys, definitely the first two. Third guy, you, you want to know skill set. If he offers something that's different than maybe the first two, which which lends him to be a factor. Um, but obviously, if there's injuries at the position or if there's been some trouble at the position, then you've got to dig deeper than that. And so really, it comes down to the circumstance and, and where they are in terms of their, their, their roster, uh, for lack of maybe a better term there. Um, and, and then this week, you know, obviously, we, we see all – all the things that are, are encompassed and, and going to continue to dig on, on everybody that can handle the football for them behind center. And um, they've got a few guys that can get the job done. And so we've got to be able to, to know what we'll get and how we'll get it out of, out of each of those guys. And so we're, we're hard at work to get that done. 